Hello, and welcome to the Mancore podcast. The Mancore is a community that focuses on topics in the areas of masculinity, physical and emotional fitness, and relationships. The Mancore was created for one simple purpose, to offer a community for men seeking their deepest purpose and their greatest potential. Welcome back to another episode here at the Main Corps. For today's podcast, it is just going to be me, and the topic that I'm going to cover today is around the emotional health of men today. The reason that I have picked this topic is because over the past year, and to some extent even before that, but certainly over the last year, I have seen the value and have really become passionate about creating tribe and creating community for men. Um, it is the very, the very catalyst that, that, that got me to start the podcast or, and uh, the, the channel on YouTube over a year ago. It's, it's the very root cause of it. As I look around, I don't see that there are many outlets for men. There are not places where they can go to you know, relate to other men who are having uh, similar experiences, similar challenges, similar failures. Um, Part of this is how we were raised. Um, You know, growing up, men are not told to to really be very expressive with with their emotions. They are not taught to work through them, to acknowledge them, to, um, to see them for what they are, to move through them. We are, we're taught to really, you know, man up or, uh, you know, don't be such a wuss, don't be a pussy, um, to not really express how we're feeling or, or not really, uh, supposed to show that kind of weakness in, various aspects of our lives, whether that is what we see on TV, what we read in the papers and the magazines, what um, we see in movies, what we hear from musical artists, is that, you know, men are are supposed to be this very stoic, uh, strengthened person that that, that is not expressive of their emotions. And no matter which way you cut it, we are human at the end of the day. We have emotions, we have experiences, we have trials and tribulations. And by suppressing those emotions, those dogs have to get out somehow. Uh, you can't just suppress negative experiences, um, you know, trauma, and expect to move through life or move through with success without those dogs needing to get out again. Uh, Many times it's in the form of addiction, uh, whether that's to food, to alcohol, to gambling, to, um, to sex, to decadence, um, to money. That's, you know, there are a number of other addictions and other things that it can come out of. But the, the point is, is that, those dogs have to get out at some point. And the way that, that we've conditioned men over the you know course of the last 40, 50 years is to really suppress those emotions, to not express them, to not show them because it's a sign of weakness. Um, we are human at the end of the day. And when we don't take the time to acknowledge them, when we don't get around other men in a very non-judgmental circle or community or tribe, if, we're, if we have that ability to be able to do that, we, we can then move through them, process through them, uh, feel it to heal it. And um, because of the way that we view and the way that we kind of classify men who uh, express their emotions, that they're a little bit, you know, off-centered or that they're emotional basket cases or that they're toxic to some extent, uh, that is 
a direct result of having suppressed emotions that society has told us not to exercise, not to express, not to uh, put any recognition around. You know, man up, don't be such a wuss, don't be such a pussy, don't be like a girl. And it, it, that just conditions men to uh, operate in a way that, that, for one, it creates isolation. You know, we're, we're going through things on our own and we're trying to cope with things on our own because the very nature of just getting that out or expressing that is seen as weakness. So that forces us to isolate and to think that the only way for, for us to deal and, and, and to work through the challenges is to one, handle it on our own, and to two, to just go to work. And I, I firmly believe that, you know, this is the direct correlation that we see to so many problems regarding anxiety, depression, isolation, and you know, the, the real problems that we have w with men, you know, it's not common for them to raise their hand and, and say, I need help. I'm going through some issues. We're at a, living at a time now where I think emotional health is, is getting a lot more recognition. And I think that's fantastic. Um, but consistent with what, you know, we talk about here at, in the community, it's likely not the message that you're going to see on CNN or CNBC or MSN or uh, you're not going to you're, you, you, you're not going to hear a compelling argument for the need for community and tribe for men, you know, as emotional um, creatures in their own right. But as um, as mental health professionals look at this issue, um, it's great that they recognize that that mental health is is a real problem because there are other things at play here. You know, the 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 rise of technology has absolutely played a, a prominent role here. But when they look at this issue as mental health professionals, it's important that they look at it as um, as how men communicate. You know, if you look at the standard way that they treat uh, that psychiatrists or therapists treat individual cases. We often treat it in the same manner in which women actually communicate better. So to, to give you an example, now men, we communicate and we think very differently than that of women. Uh, men work best when they are in tribe, when they are shoulder to shoulder with other brothers, when they're, when they're fighting for something and working in tandem on something together, something bigger than themselves. You can look no further than, you know, our favorite sports teams. Um, they're operating at their best and they win their best when they're all working together on the same issues, the same successes, the same challenges, the same highs and lows. They stand hand in hand. They stand shoulder to shoulder with each other. They don't stand face to face, you know, one on one getting real deep. That's not how men communicate. Um, if you look at the battlefield. When men come together and, and they, they're they in, in battle, when they're uh, looking out for one another, when they're accepting one another, when they're protecting one another, when they're offering a, a safe space for one another, that is how men communicate. But we don't, tr mental health professionals don't treat men with depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar disorder, um, social awkwardness. Like we don't treat men that way. We treat them in the way that women communicate best, which is to talk about, you know, real deeply about feelings and to go into depth and to do it one-on-one -on -one and to develop a, um, a very close uh, relationship. I do think that that's important, but we can't completely negate the styles of communication that men and women have. As I mentioned, we communicate very differently. So, one, I think that the style of treatment that, that we offer men has to be acknowledged because the way that it's done now is not the natural way that men communicate. It's not the natural way that we have a proven track record of being successful at. Apart from the style of treatment, I personally believe that the environment of the treatment has to be better. Um, that also has to be acknowledged. It can't be the uh, the only way that we look at this as a way of just being one-on-one, -on -one, 
therapist and and um and patient we can't look at it as that being the only way we have to change the the environment so you know i've been very bullish over the past year about creating community about creating tribe for men creating more resources outlets for them to go there's you know if i have problems as a man and i have some things that i you know need to go through it is it's incumbent upon me as a man to figure out what's going on and, and, and what issues that I can work through and resolve. That's incumbent upon me. That rests on my shoulders at the end of the day. But if I've been conditioned over the, you know, my life to not be expressive and to not, you know, show these signs of weaknesses, where do I go? Who do I reach out to? Where's a safe space for me to express what I'm going through be in a not judgmental circle of other men who know what I'm going through and can relate to what I'm going through. Do we have those places today? Do we have, you know, circles where, where men are getting together? This is what, this is what we really need. We need tribe. Um, I've been very bullish on this and this is why I think that you know, it's not it's not necessarily a problem of the brain. I think it's a, it's a problem of um, uh, like a social problem. And, you know, early prevention, I think, is very possible um, if we can teach men to want to come together. You know, referring back to the isolation that I mentioned a few moments ago, if if the way that we raise boys into men is to, you know, be that way to just man up, not express emotions, and to, to, to kind of move them into that state where they're going to be isolated, to go out and find out and figure it out for themselves, to go out on your own. Um, I do think that it's important that we teach them how to be self-reliant. That's crucial. But to do so in a way that, that's healthy, uh, to, to teach them that it's okay to lean on their brother, to reach out, to be okay to express the need that you need help. That kind of isolation that we experience as men when we don't deal with our bullshit, it creates not only isolation and, and you know, that, that sort of lonely depression, but it also creates a fiercely competitive nature in each one of us. That's, we have too much of that now where people are, are really trying to shake each other down and uh, pull each other off the mountain. And the best way for us to look at it is, is that we should all join hands and, and, and really move together on this. You know, let's, let's get together. Let's bring community. Let's bring tribe. Let's all fight the issues together like we have a proven track record of doing, whether you're on a, a team or, or sports team whether you're fighting on the battlefield, um, whether, you know, that's something for a bigger cause. That's the most important message here is that, you know, we really need to find a way to get around other men and to, you know, create a, an environment that's safe for them to work through the issues and to not be afraid to ask. There's a lot of pressure and, and, and stigma around men seeking or needing treatment. And that's, to me, directly correlated and a derivative of, of the social conditioning that we placed on them. Seeing it as weakness. Um, just man up. You know, be very stoic to not be very expressive. Um, it starts with, you know, how, how we raise boys into men. Um, this is on the emotional side, but, you know, the brain and the body are, are very connected. So if the brain is not functioning at its, at its best, it's conceivable, and it, it happens all the time, that men experience fatigue, body pain, severe sleep disturbances, and erectile dysfunction. So their sexual health is, is at risk here. Um, you know, we have to we have to see that both the way that we treat them and the style in which we treat them is very relevant and that we need to, you know, incorporate the fact that we do best in a community. 
We do best shoulder to shoulder, not one to one face to face, getting very deep, fighting for something greater than ourselves. Um, you know, it's we have to learn that 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 men need help too. You know, they're in dire need of of a place where they can go, a safe space where they can go uh, to experience brotherhood, not to be in competition with their brothers around them. When we come together as men for a higher purpose, we have a proven track record of always doing better collectively, not one on one, not in isolation, but together. So that's my message for today. And I want to take the opportunity to thank you very much for listening to the second episode here at the main core podcast. I look forward to seeing you here again at a future podcast episode. Take care, be well, and thank you very much.